I can't begin to express to you the joy that rung in my soul because the Lord showed me that vision, the vision of religions protesting, but he never told me when and who. But they done it when the apostles was here until so they said, we got to stop these men. Before they turn the world upside down, they didn't surround T.D. Jakes. They didn't surround Creflo Dollar. They didn't surround Benny Hinn. It's the truth of God that's causing a disturbance here. of God is causing a disturbance in you. So they said that I should have came out and they got mad because I told the brothers and sisters when you leave and go outside after the benediction if they come to you treat them respectfully speak to them and keep going like they're not there. They didn't like that. Now, since last Sunday, I received several letters from other Hebrew Israelite organizations apologizing. <laughs> apologizing for the antics of the so-called brethren. Let me say, the truth of God have an international platform. And they wanted me to come outside because they want our platform. And they're mad because we won't give them our platform. I don't call you Hebrew Israelites. In the 1920s and the 1930s, I believe it was either in New York or Chicago, there was a game called the Purple Game. That's all you are to me. And your purple and gold pajamas, you're nothing but the Purple Game. <laughs> they say he don't preach God is black. I most certainly do not. I preach God is a spirit. A spirit. Give me Romans. Romans chapter 9. And then give me Revelation. Romans chapter 9 and we'll start at verse 5. This is what I think of you so-called Hebrew Israelites, the purple gang. Amen. See, everyone that claims they are Israel is not Israel. That's right. This is the same ones you see on the corners. Cussing. You can see them on social media where folks that videotape them. Beating up women, stomping them, slapping them around, abusing them. They surround the whole church. And let me say it to the purple gang. <laughs> I'm from the hood. I'm used to noise. That's right. Do you really think your hollering and screaming moved me? I'm from Huntington Park. I was raised among hollering and screaming. That don't move me. Though when the host should encamp against me. Your hollering and screaming, your antics, I must say, well, it was a pretty decent show. <laughs> pretty decent performance. And they done what I knew they would do, eventually leave. Notice what the book says in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 9 and we're at verse 6. You see, I am sound yes, sir. Yes, sir. in the faith that when I declare I'm not intimidated by anybody, I mean it. You surrounding the truth of God's campus, you have no idea how much of a blessing you were <laughs> to the truth of God. What you've done, you have brought more attention 
to the campus until some are here now that used to be Hebrew Israelites that had repented and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So this is one preacher who ain't moved by noise. Oh no. You can holler until you lose your voice. Pastor Jennings is not intimidated by nobody and nothing. This shows you how strong the gospel is. Where religion will come and encircle the entire church. You could have yelled all day, but these walls of Jericho would never come down. The Bible is not designed to cater to nobody's color. Who cares how black you are? In the 30s, in the 20s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, the Ku Klux Klan had the same cheap, weak, frail teaching. They called themselves white Christians. Burning crosses. Their uniforms, white sheets. White pillowcases. And their bigot belief, all heaven would be white and black folk had no chance of being saved. The Hebrew Israelites come with the same thing. That Jesus died only for people of color. And all white folk are lost. Now I have a very interesting question. To all black historians, who have any knowledge of slavery. According to history, people of color was kidnapped from Africa, brought to Europe and also to America, sold like livestock. And whatever bigot purchased you he purchased you with the attitude you was nothing but like a horse, an ox. You were property. To identify his property, he or she took the name of its master. I want you to follow me good. Then your enslaved master took your mama your sister, your daughter, and had unlawful sex with them at will. So then the children that was born on that plantation, if Mr. Harris was the slave master, then all slaves took on Harris' name. But when White Harris laid with the black woman and a child came forth, the child was mixed blood. I want you to follow me. Black and white, mixed blood. This went on for years and years. Now to you, to the purple gang. Which one of you black men is pure black? <laughs> and
And if you are a product of descendants from slaves in which we are, then there is white blood in your black body. So if the black man have no chance of being saved, then what part of you is going to hell? Because there's a whiteness in you. Then that will make some part of your DNA, some part of you has got to go to hell according to what you believe. If whites have no chance to be saved and you trace your tree back to a plantation, your black face with white blood. So, tell me how God going to do this. Is he going to take the white part out of you and send it to hell and then the black part he's going to take into heaven? You say God is all black because the Bible said his hair is like wool. All right? Come here, Brother Campbell. So, his hair like wool. White like wool, white as snow. That's what the book says. The, book says. the hairs of his head is white like wool. White as snow. They look at the scripture where his feet and his arms and hands like fine brass. They say that's the color of a black man. All right. But what color is his head? Hmm. <laughs> it's the language of the scripture that they overlook. And it is this fine detail that I love to see. That's right. Listen at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, we'll start at verse 13. Listen. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, in one like. In the midst light, of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Listen. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. What is it? His head. Head and is his, one thing. His head. And his hairs. And his hairs. What color was his head and his hairs? Were white. Like what? Like wool. As white as snow. That don't mean that God was a white man. But here you got his feet. And his feet. His feet. Like unto fine brass. As what? As if they burned in a furnace. So brass, you know, that brassy look. So right then they say God is black. Well, if that means God is black, why is his head white? That's right. That's right. Don't tell me God got leprosy. And don't tell me God is misbreed. That's right. His head and is his one hairs. color, mm -hmm. but what? And his head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs was white like wool. As white as snow. You see, your scalp can be black, but your hair that comes from the scalp can be different colors. Right. It can be blonde. Okay. It can be silver. Yeah. It can be white. Yeah. But your scalp, your head, head. your head, head. is covered with skin. So your skin will blend in with your hands. Right. So why isn't God's head, head. brass? Yeah. If God is all black. That's right. That's right. The Bible says what? His head. What? His head. This part. Head. His head. And his hairs. Well, he don't have the hairs, but he got the head. All right, brother. His head and his hairs were white. White, 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 white like wool. Like his wool. head and hairs, white. That's right. Like wool, white as snow. That's right. Then what? And his feet. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. Whole different color. As if they burned in the furnace. Head one color, feet another. You see, God was not concerned 
with trying to make any race superior to another. That's right. Black supremacy is just as rotten as white supremacy. Here we are in the last days. People are dying, killing each other. Women are being raped. Our young children are going to jail, committing murder at 10. Last, earlier this week in Philadelphia alone, a group of young kids murdered freely for fun. A 75-year-old man beat him down in the street took a street cone and beat him with other objects and later on he died and the youngest one was 10. Ten. All this murder, the world is lost. And the only thing you can think of is being black. Lord. The black man that don't obey God is a lost black man. For if you don't obey what God commands, obedience outweighs your color. All you black people, people of color that is joining religions, worrying about tracing your origin back to one of the tribes of Israel. I'm out of Judah, I'm from Reuben, I'm from Gad, I'm from Dan, I'm from Issachar, I'm from Nephtali, I'm from Benjamin, I'm from Joseph. Which one of you are from God? I come from God. I don't care what tribe I come from. Because coming from a tribe of Israel don't guarantee me eternal life. It is my obedience to God that guarantees me eternal life with him. That's why they hate my big trumpet mouth. They surround the whole campus. They probably was out there for over two hours or more yelling constantly, hollering and speakers and all that. And I wasn't phased. No, you weren't. It was wonderful. <laughs> Give me the book of Romans. Romans chapter 9 and at verse 6. Solomon. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Not as though. Oh, the word of God is having effect too, brother. Oh, yes. I disagree with many men, but I would never belittle myself to go on the outside of their place of worship and holler and scream and make noise like a bunch of children playing in the park. That's right. I would never belittle myself and try to interrupt somebody else's service even if they worship is false. That's right. I would never belittle myself. That's right. But the purple gang really thought they accomplished something hmm. and you didn't accomplish nothing. Think of it. You came to the Truth of God campus and you screamed and you yelled and you marched away. That's right. You scream. That's right. Surround the whole campus. About two or three hundred of them. Screamed and yelled. And then you marched away. That's right. And did you actually think that noise will bring some type of intimidation or scare us? That's right. There was a king named Jehoshaphat. There was another king named Ahab. Ahab done something similar. He wanted to take some territory called Ramoth Gilead. But Jehoshaphat was spiritual minded. So Ahab got about 400 and some liars. That's right. Hollering with one voice. He went 
to them, should I take Ramoth Gilead or should I forbear? forbear? And they all said with one voice, go up, go up and prosper. They was outside for probably over two hours yelling my name. Yes, they were. Pastor Gino Jenner. That's right. We want Gino Jenner. Yes, they were. <laughs> I am so grateful that you think enough of my name <laughs> that you will scream it with all of your might. That's right. You have really touched my holy heart. Amen. Are you getting the old troublemaker? Amen. Listen. Back in Romans 9 and verse 6. Says what? Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. Not as though the word of God didn't take effect. For they are not all Israel. They are not all Israel. Which are of Israel. Which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Are they all children? But in Isaac. In Isaac. Shall thy seed be called. Because you claim you from Israel. So what? So what? Because you say you are the real Israelites, so what? So what? If you don't obey Jehovah's command, that's right. Then Israel will go to hell. What advantage then hath the Jew? Listen at this. In Romans chapter three and at verse one, Pastor Paul said, "What advantage then? What advantage then hath have the Jew? The Jew, or what profit is or there? What profit?" Is there of circumcision? Is there of circumcision? What then? What then? Are we better than they? Are the Jews better than anybody else? No. The Bible asks the question. What then? Here you are surrounding the truth of God campus and head on. Amen. Spoke before you got there. What then? What then? Are we better than they? Are we better than they? No! But I got on purple and gold. No! But I got dreadlocks. No! But I got a beard. No! I'm black. No! Brown. No! Yellow. No! Cinnamon. No! Peanut butter. No! Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Give me the book of Revelation. Now in Revelation chapter 2 and at verse 9. Says what? I know thy works. God talking. God talking. I know thy works. I know all about you. And tribulation. I know what you went through. And poverty. Your poverty. But thou art rich. Yet you're rich. Hold it. You're poor. He said, I know your state of poverty, but yet you're rich. Yet you're rich. How are you rich? When you have God's word, you have the greatest riches in the world. That's right. What is it? I know thy works in tribulation and poverty. Yes. But thou art rich. But you're rich. And I know the blasphemy. And I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews. Of them that say they are Jews. And are not. What are they, William? But are the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> Amen. That's why that hollering don't move me. That's right. That's right. Amen. Jehovah is with the truth of God. That's right. I don't have to march around synagogues and church. No. All I got to do is what God say do. Preach the words. Think of it. It is the preaching of the word that made you get out your bed and drive your cars and surround the church because the word was preached. That's right. That's right. What did they have in mind? We got to stop these men. Stop, stop them. They're troubling Philadelphia too bad. <laughs> That's right. Truth of God all over social media. That's right. Souls is being converted. Yeah. Muslims are coming going down in the water. Hebrews are coming going down in the water. Germans are going down in the water. Africans are going down in the water. Indians are receiving the Holy Ghost. Oh. 
Are you getting what I'm talking? I know thy works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know. Hallelujah. I know thy works. I know thy work. And tribulation. And tribulation. And poverty. Poverty. That thou, but thou art rich. You're rich. And I know the blasphemy. I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews. Of them that say they are God's people. And are not. And are not. But are the synagogue of Satan. Now, a synagogue is a temple. And your body is a temple of the living God. So with the mouth, they profess that they know God. Works. But it works. They deny him. So your body, which is a temple, which is a synagogue, is corrupt. That's right. That's right. With your mouth, you say I'm a Jew. But with your hands, you beat women. Yeah. That's the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. With your mouth, you say I'm a Jew. But with your hands, you're gambling. That's right. With your mouth, you say I'm a Jew. But with your hands, you're stealing. This people honors me with their with lips. With your mouth, you say I'm a Jew. And with that same mouth, you're cussing. That's right. With the mouth you say you're a Jew, but with that same mouth you said Paul was not a Jew. That's right. And yet Paul said, I come from the stock of Israel. Come from Abraham, a Benjamite, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. That's right. That's right. With say So they are here Jews. you're looking at a preacher. Mm. And let me say it plain. <laughs> I don't care. That's right. I don't care. That's right. Who declare themselves to be a Jew outwardly. Outwardly. That's right. That's right. Well, are you a Jew? Yes. Yes. That's right. I'm more of a Jew than you are. That's right. Yeah. Give me the first chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Let's see how are we a Jew. Romans chapter 2. The second chapter of the book of Romans. And at verse 28. For he is not a Jew. He is not a Jew. Which is one outwardly. Because you got on purple and gold. That's right. And because you read from the Old Testament. That's right. And because you march around bragging about your cheap, dirty, filthy, ungodly black skin. Go ahead. They ain't nothing but outward Judaism talk. That's right. That don't mean nothing. Amen. Even if you still got the full sin yeah. of your private parts carried around in your hand. That's right. If your body is circumcised, That's right. but your heart is not, you's a sinner. That's right. It was a sinner. That's right. Circumcised flesh, carrying around foreskin, yeah. ain't worth a dime. That's right. If the heart is no good, all you got is foreskin from your private part. That's it. That's it. That's, it. That's, it. That's why holiness yes, sir. is of a necessity. That's right. It brings the sword of God's word. That circumcised the heart. That's it. And I get rid of all your black and white hatred. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? For he is not a Jew. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 2 and at verse 28. He is not a Jew. Which is one outwardly. Which is one outward. Neither is that circumcision. Neither is that circumcision. Which is outward, which is in, the outward flesh. in the flesh. But what? But he is a Jew. He is a Jew. Which, where? Is, which is one inwardly. Where? Inwardly. Inwardly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. I'm a Jew on the inside. Inwardly.